I think it's just the beginning. It's the beginning of the car that drives itself. But if you think about it, cars driving themselves, saving people's lives and taking away the, the, the pressure they have to, 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 to drive a car manually would be really, really big. Oh, please, please. Yeah. You're as much part of it as anybody else. Nice yeah. yeah. right. he, he said, you know about this race, the DARPA Grand Challenge? I said, yeah, I heard a little bit about it. And he said, uh, we can win it. And I said, really? And I said, how much is it going to cost? And he said, well, don't worry about that right now. And he said, uh, we'll, we'll win it. For me, this is the beginning and not the end. It's inevitable to me that 50 years from now, cars will drive themselves, even 30 years from now, to be honest. We received a report uh, that the bubbles in Guinness beer go down on the side of the glass. Well, we've discovered that it's true of lots of beers, including those that just have carbon dioxide. For example, we see it in Boddington, which is another lovely creamy ale. Uh, and uh, we also can make it happen in just plain water to which we add uh, some fizzing tablet. Why does it do this? Well, the answer turns out to be really very simple. It's based on the idea of what goes up has to come down. In this case, what goes up is the bubbles go up, of course. And the bubbles go up more easily in the center of the beer glass than on the sides because of drag from the walls. What the problem here is, is that good old Nostradamus makes me very jealous because his crystal ball is clear and ours are partly cloudy. And what do we do to make a forecast forward? Well, we use traditional Popperian falsification science. We get all the data we can on the atmosphere. We write down laws which we then try to validate in the lab and on other planets. We go through this whole process that is retrospective or looking at the present. It isn't future oriented. From which we construct a model usually mathematically expressed which we think condenses our best understanding of that system. We've been studying the Sea of Cortez um, and the, the adjacent Yaqui Valley for about 10 years and we've found um, that agricultural fertilization results in, in very large losses of nitrogen from the land to the water systems. And we've, uh, with this study, found that the nitrogen that's leaving the land to the ocean is actually having an effect on the Sea of Cortez, on the ocean water itself, causing blooms of phytoplankton that then are transported across the, the sea. I do not think that uh it is time to give up. In, in, in fact, I think that string theorists right now are very strongly in favor of very careful investigation of cosmology. For example, there was a no-go theorem that it's impossible to explain acceleration of the universe in string theory. No-go theorem means under these conditions, string theory cannot explain our universe. So what we did, we looked under some other conditions and we found a way to explain the uh, acceleration of the universe. We have a severe predicament that humanity is in now due to the fact that we're vastly overpopulated. We are attacking our life support systems and uh, pretending that we don't have to care about what happens to our children and grandchildren. And the scientific community knows this very well. There's basic unanimity about it. We've got to know ourselves better and figure out how to steer cultural evolution. We can't steer genetic evolution. There's not enough time if we knew how. We don't know how, and it would probably be totally unacceptable.